Hey, you're watching Pilot Season. I'm your host and showrunner, Ryan Burkett. Pilot Season is monthly on the Trident Network, a three-pronged entertainment company featuring shows just like this live on Twitch, web series and videos you can watch places like YouTube, and podcasts of every single genre. Every month, I'm joined by my friend, my tech support, my stage manager, and most importantly, the creator of the Trident Network, Val Agnew. Val, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I sure can. How are you tonight? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. How, uh, what else is going on with the Trident Network? What's new? Uh, what's new? Um, honestly, we're kind of just like straight chilling right now. Um, we haven't added a new show since I'm so glad you asked, but they're doing so well that we don't need to add shows for a while. Um, but otherwise we're just, we're having a good time. Some of us are still on strike solidarity. So we're, some of us are on a little bit of a break. Um, but yeah, we're just, we're, we're living our life right now. Amazing. I, I tuned into the spark on Sunday. They get deep on the spark. Oh Yeah. I they mean, have it's Carly. Some, it was some real talk. <laughs> <laughs> she said that the, this past weekend was a particularly deep one, but I think yeah. she's actually having Kayla of the Witching Hour on as a guest next month. So definitely worth a tune in to the Spark. Awesome, um, and yeah, obviously we also want to say here on pilot season, the irony of us creating a, a make believe improvised sitcom every month isn't lost on us during the strike. Uh, we support SAG and the WGA. They deserve everything they're asking for and then some. And uh, we can't wait till that happens for them uh, so that everybody on, on this Zoom can also get those jobs. We have, we have ulterior motives. We support workers <laughs> also. We'd like to join them. Uh, Every episode of pilot season, we have a team of writers and a team of actors that collaborate on an original sitcom pilot that's never been done before, live streaming right here on Twitch. Val, before we meet our teams, we're gonna need to get a suggestion. Uh, we're continuing our little arc of Fish Out of Water this episode. Um, a Fish Out of Water sitcom is like uh, The Nanny, where it's like uptown meets downtown or like uh, Green Acres, where it's like uh, a farm with uh, rich people who are dumb. Um, <laughs> well, the way we get that here, obviously we're gonna get um, an example of a sitcom character from one world and what it might be like if they joined the world of another sitcom. Right. Um, we've done uh, Leslie Nope on Black Mirror. Last week we did Jon Snow on Three's Company. So things like that. And obviously, you know that you have executive power to pick and choose from those suggestions as you see fit. Yes. And I would like to also make a request because last week or last month, I think there was some confusion. We want to put them ideally on a sitcom, if at all possible, rather than <laughs> like a really dark, dramatic show. So if you can pick a dramatic <laughs> character, but just the show should probably be a sitcom. We do get a lot of, uh, what if a sweet character was terrified? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> while Val is uh, getting that suggestion for us, we're going to meet our teams. Listen, I'm a writer. I love writers. My favorite people in the world are writers. But here at pilot season, we meet the actors first. And so this this episode on our, on our teams, we have a lot of first time guests. We're so excited. On the acting team joining us tonight, we have Jessica Benson. Jessica, welcome Thanks. to pilot season. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jessica, let's get to know you a little better. Uh, what What is your favorite sitcom? It could be your all time favorite, something you're binging lately. Um, I really like Never Have I Ever. Okay. That's... Which is like a high school, I would call it a sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> We, we get a lot of repeat answers, and that's the first time we've heard that. I'm very excited. <laughs> um, Jessica, follow up question: If you could have a best friend character on a 
on a sitcom. If you could be someone's sidekick, someone's bestie, who would you pick? And I'm their best friend. Um, uh, oh, it would be Jess and Jess on New Girl. I would be Jess's other best friend. I love that. <laughs> Good call. That's a great call. Um, also joining us for the first time this week, we have Jake Dirks Heidi. Hi. Jake, welcome to pilot season. Thank you for having me, Ryan. Jake, same initial question. What's your favorite sitcom? Uh, I won't I won't say this is my well, these are my favorite sitcoms, but Comfort Food to me is really like the old Disney Channel original sitcoms. Like I, yeah. I watched so much of those growing up, and there's something still so soothing to me about like the like that's so Raven's sweet life era of Disney. So like that, yeah, I, I always love a, a controversy in a high school that ends in someone dressing up in a costume to get out of it. Yeah, I feel like when we sort of evolved the format of sitcoms in like the mainstream adult world and then places like Disney Channel and Nickelodeon and places like that took over like the three camera, like studio audience classic sitcom format. Yeah, heightened it, some would say. They kept it alive, yeah. <laughs> um, Jake, if you could work any sitcom job, which one would you pick? Any sitcom job? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, you, you do have to do the job. <laughs> uh, do you remember that show, um, uh, Better Off Ted? I think it was like one or two seasons or something, but it was like an R&D department where they were just like testing all kinds of wacky inventions and and uh products and things i would be in that r d team they got to do a lot of fun stuff fantastic we we had a a, a sort of eulogy for better off ted last week oh it was gone too soon and we got a, a tearful goodbye from from one mr matt fox who we'll meet in just a second oh great r.i.p yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> returning uh to pilot season, but for the first time as an actor, we have Matt Fox. Welcome back, Matt. Hello, I'm so glad to be back. It's such an honor, a privilege. So Matt, we've talked to you about sitcoms quite a bit now, obviously about, about Better Off Ted. So a, a follow-up question for you, if you could pick an actor who's never done a sitcom before, maybe it's someone from movies or Broadway or someone who's known for being very serious, who would you build that sitcom around? Um, I would love to see Christoph Waltz in a sitcom as like as the 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 quote unquote straight man, but as like the the one that's unwavering because I think he's such a good actor that he could sell all the jokes just by how committed he is uh, as a performer. Yeah, there's no reason that we can't John Lithgow Christoph Waltz. Yes, <laughs> and I love John Lithgow. So if if the Lithgowification of Waltz happens, I will be the first one in line to watch the show. Yeah, you all. All right, so now joining in this, this episode on the writers team, we have Christopher Arneson. Chris, welcome to pilot season. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Chris, favorite sitcom? Favorite sitcom? Um, you know, I think I've seen 30 Rock at least two dozen times at this point. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it to Les Lemon. <laughs> that's one of the, that's one of the classics around here. That's, we hear that one a lot. Um, if you could live, Christopher, uh, follow-up question. If you could live in any sitcom town, which one would you pick? Oh man. Um, I kind of want to live in the New York that Broad City lives in because um, it's absolutely unhinged. Got to you. Got to go to Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. Chris, you're I not gotta... even the first person who's ever said that exact thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I get points for this, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, joining us also for the first time this episode, we have John Francis. John, how are you tonight? Hey, I'm good. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Welcome to pilot season, John. You, here it comes. Favorite sitcom. Oh boy, lately because I got tired of Seinfeld lately. It's I've been watching we've been watching King of the Hill all the time. And it has some of the best like just one-liners. It's got I probably probably isn't my favorite for story, but the one-liners on it, there's just they hold up so 
there's this one where Betty White is on and she just like says to Hank Hill at one point, I hate you. And it's <laughs> so funny. There's like setup for why it's <laughs> funny that she hates him. But um, yeah, I guess King of the Hill. King of the Hill is beautifully cast. That's yeah, one of the yeah. best casts of all time in a sitcom. Uh, John, your favorite sitcom set, like the literal physical environment of a sitcom. My favorite set of a sitcom. I got to go with the Larry Sanders show. Because uh, it's the set of a talk show and 30 Rock's already been used. No, um, that's not why. Uh, <laughs> but it is the set of a talk show. And there's something about, if, if you've seen it, it's the claustrophobia of like going through the process of doing that show. It's like, it's kind of got that West Wing walking through halls thing that in that way that it, uh, you kind of, it really exudes fearing, or not fearing, but uh, that work environment that gets kind of just claustrophobic and tight. Um, and there was all those office doors, so no one can just walk down the hall. They're always joined by someone who needs a favor or who has a problem or, yeah. And they and Larry will kind of like um, try to avoid everybody like, in that situation, which it's used, the set's a big character in the show, I think. Um, yeah, I I can talk about Larry Sanders all day. I think Gary Shandling on Larry Sanders is top 10 sitcom performance. It's a great show. Thanks for thanks for mentioning that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm happy to. I'm happy I could. I'm happy I could. Uh, joining us also for the first time tonight, we have Richie Owens. Richie, welcome to pilot season. Hi, thank you for having me. Richie, I'd like to know your favorite sitcom. Oh boy, I wasn't expecting this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite sitcom is uh, the first three seasons of Community. Okay. Uh, the last three, uh, take or leave. I, I would actually leave, I would say. There's some good parts, but the first three seasons I think are perfect. And had it ended there, um, I would have no negative memories of it. I have a little bit of a hot take about that in general. I think three seasons is great for any show. When people are like, oh, this show's gone yeah. too soon, that we should have 10 seasons in a movie. Give me a hot three season run of a show any day. Yeah, I mean, the the British got it right in that regard for sure. Yeah. And you know, I'm always giving them crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always got talking it. crap about it. About the Brits. You but in that regard, them. they got it right. <laughs> uh Richie, same question as Jessica. If you if you could be any sidekick, any sitcom character's best friend, any sidekick, or they could be yours, who would you pick? Um it's a good question. I feel like um I would sort of go with to continue with the community thing. I'd be Troy and Abed and Richie. Uh because they just have fun with each other. And that's uh that's great. That's what I want to do. Just have fun. Listen, if they had you, I'd say four seasons. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Val, do we have a suggestion? <laughs> we have a lot, and I would say 80% of them are the show Dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> which I would take, because Chris... Chris says hi, who is, you know, our, our beloved Chris, uh, is really determined to get dinosaurs in. Um, but I really like a combo from a couple different suggestions. Uh, okay. uh, Wednesday Adams in Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> okay. I think I think that's great. I didn't know if you were going to say another one, but that's no. I mean, that's I mean, the, there were a few other thoughts, but that that one stood out to me for sure. Unless you want to include something from Outlander, which was also a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with when with everybody loves Wednesday. Um, Val, we're going to break that down as a group. While we're doing that, if you could also reach out to the chat for a title. Everybody loves Wednesday has been i've i've expunged that that one's that one's too obvious <laughs> why i thought of it um we need a better one and if you could get that we're gonna 
join in with our teams here and get to the bottom of this. Um, let's talk a little bit about who those those characters are. Um, Everybody Loves Raymond, of course, is a classic family sitcom. They have kids that are only upstairs. This will be one change <laughs> into that format is there will be a kid on this show. Um, but it's all the trials and tribulations. It mainly takes place in the house. We've got, you know, a full family. And then Wednesday Adams is our classic, like, goth preteen. Um, we'll start with our actors again. Uh, just want to know any characters that you're inspired by with this suggestion, any characters that you see creating anything that sparked your, your imagination. We'll start with Jessica. Um... <laughs> Can we start with anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> can we start with anyone else? Oh, absolutely. We can circle right back to you. We'll start with Matt. Matt, any uh, characters that this combination inspires you to start with? I feel like uh, the quality that I'm thinking of is like nosy because like uh i can't remember ray's mom's name uh but her character is like very intrusive and like always shows up to say her opinion and i feel like the adams family is typically also plagued by uh nosy neighbors or people that want them to adhere to their rules so i would say some amalgamation of like a maybe like a a teacher at school who's a little too up in this family's business about Wednesday or the, this unnamed goth girl's, uh, you know, performance in school or attitude getting up in the business. Perfect. I think Ray's mom's name is Marie. Marie. <laughs> Marie. <That's right. laughs> uh, Jake, same question. Any, any characters that you're inspired to create anybody that you see in this world? Mm-hmm. I so the most interesting character on Raymond to me was always the Brad Garrett character Robert right so it's it, it's sort of this like dynamic between the um sort of push and pull of the relationship with Frank and Marie a lot sort of uh <laughs> Deborah and Raymond pushing them away and Robert sort of being stuck in between them and he kind of likes being babied by them and and the attention that he gets from them but also wants to side with Raymond and Deborah, And so that sort of like uh, character that is maybe um, uh, more, more inclined to go with the antics of our Wednesday Adams, um, but might also feel a little bit of trepidation or, or resistance with the other outside forces against her. Yeah, I love that. All right, Jessica, any, any inspiration for any characters we might see? <laughs> Um, okay, so just like talking off the top of my head, like it's both of them are families. They're uh, both families. I feel like um, character wise, um, there's like, I mean, if we're thinking of, we're thinking Wednesday in Everyone Loves Raymond. Okay. Uh, there's like the big character who um, everybody loves Raymond, the brother. Is that Robert? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So we already talked about him, but he kind of reminds me of like her, uh, like safekeeper or their like or the Adams family, like big Frankenstein guy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so there's sort of corresponding. I feel like yeah, um, I think it'd be funny if Wednesday. Uh, well, I guess uh, Wednesday having Raymond like qualities, I think would be interesting because she's goth, but Raymond is like so not goth. Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, I guess that's kind of what I'm thinking so far. I love that. I also, we need to cast Brad Garrett as Lurch ASAP. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. Right, That's a great idea. Yeah, uh, let's turn to our writing team. Uh, we need some situations for this sitcom. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you. Any any situations or plot lines that you see developing with this combo? Oh, man. Uh, I... I really loves uh, I grew up watching like TV land and stuff and I have a pretty I love the like old black and white 
uh, Wednesday Adams TV show and stuff. And I loved the stuff that they pulled from the movies where they were a misfit family living in a vanilla world. Um, I mean, I think that uh, you could put them against literally anyone and they become a foil for them. Um, I really love how the family is like this. They're always the ones that are like in the right. You know, like they love each other, they have principles, they teach each other lessons, and then everyone else is normal, um, so to speak. But in, like in the movies and stuff, they're always evil. So I think that there's got to be some uh, evil person kind of working their way into this family and trying to kill Fester again. Or uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love uh, Robert is Lurch is so brilliant i can't get over that honestly <laughs> so good and um, chris follow-up question what's a location that we might see in this this episode i think they have to go to a summer camp at some point right <laughs> all right yeah good to know everybody keep summer camp in mind um john same question um any situations that you might be thinking of inspired by for this combo yeah, you know, I'm thinking that it's like you were saying with the uh, family that is sort of the foil, and now Wednesday doesn't even have the family anymore. So it seems like the the Raymond war small world problem thing would just really encroach on Wednesday's sensibility about everything. And it seems like it would trigger some kind of crisis to figure out quickly how to either become maybe she wrestles with should she become a little bit more like the Raymond you know the Raymond family type or uh because she's not going to have that uh in the inner family I mean you know it's not Gomez anymore and uh and their <laughs> relationship it's it's the brother and the mother-in-law you know it's a different um some kind of conflict related to that I think yeah uh, uh, John, what time period is this sitcom set in? Is it in the present day? Is it in the past? Oh, um, I feel like the early 2000s would be a great um, time for this to happen, probably. Yeah, I love a, a Pen15 era Wednesday Adams. <laughs> <Great. laughs> uh, Richie, same same initial question. Any situations that you've inspired been inspired to create for this? Yeah, um, I I would love to see uh, Wednesday take uh, Raymond to like a blood sacrifice, uh, uh, just some like really, really kind of a uh, scary evil thing that she is like. This makes me happy, and he's like, "Well, I guess you're." Which is she going to be his daughter in this, uh, or adopted, or she's just there. <laughs> I mean, we can, um, we can figure out that. I do love the idea of a daddy-daughter blood sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yeah, it is a little hack. He's supporting but... her hobbies. Um, and Richie, um, imagine this sitcom was pitched to you. You're a very powerful network executive. Um, you're green lighting this for five seasons. Give us an idea of like what network you would put this on. Um, what's its audience rating does it have a studio audience is it single camera etc yeah so i i'm sort of feeling um going going off on a wild one here the wb network uh <laughs> <laughs> this is uh yeah i'm also getting like buffy vampire slayer yeah absolutely uh, yeah yeah, I love that. And also just a reminder to cast and writer's room, um, in thanks to a grant that has been generously paid by the Trident Network, we have prepaid several FCC fines. So if this is a sitcom where there's an F-bomb or an S-bomb or any bomb that anybody's thinking of, you're in the clear. Uh, Val, do we have a title for this show? Well, I think the original consensus was that everyone liked your title. <laughs> but uh, people have thrown out some alternate possible ideas. Um, everybody hates Thursday. <laughs> um, <It's right. laughs> 
uh scary with children <laughs> um throw that's me good. a throw me a barone because that's their last name the <laughs> family's last name um and uh wednesday hates you <laughs> does any does anybody have a favorite i i do like what was the one with thursday everybody hates thursday everybody hates thursday <laughs> does anyone does anyone have a preference they may have a, a favorite out of those what was the second one again <laughs> not to go through the entire list uh <laughs> i think that was uh scary with children oh yeah i like that mm, yeah it's like really good too yeah. yeah um i think it's gonna be scary with children and then maybe our episode title could be thursday hates everyone pilot yeah. oh, thursday hates everyone <laughs> um i do just want to as a reminder to our audience and our teams tonight this isn't literally if wednesday adams was on everybody loves raymond it's a character like Wednesday in a world that is similar to the world of Everybody Loves Raymond. So we'll have different names in different situations. Um, we're in the early 2000s. We're getting ready to do our cold open. It's gonna be a really short scene. We'll get to meet some characters. We'll hear a joke and Val will uh, call it for opening credits. Actors and writers, do you feel ready? Are you prepared to do the cold open for Scary With Children? All right, Val, let's do it. Let's do it. Now, uh, I'm just going to voice my concern over your daughter bringing a rolling backpack full of spiders and centipedes to our fifth grade classroom. Uh, I asked well, her defense, she didn't open the backpack, right, honey? Uh, right, honey? Yeah, that that was my understanding, uh, but we we did hear it uh, the entire class. You could hear them crawling over each other, and the kids were disturbed. I I was also disturbed, and I don't like to vomit in front of my students, but I I really couldn't hold it back. So I Have wanted you ever to talk heard to of the thing called brown noise. Brown brown noise. Yes. I know I it helps I, me focus in school. You want to take focus away from the children? I'm sorry, do you not want her to succeed in your class? You, you know what? You're you're saying some real uh things that I need to think about. Um in science, you should know it. You know what? I I uh I feel I feel addressed as an adult and also uh, ashamed that I am not more prepared for, for students of all kinds to come through my classroom. After all, this is 2001 uh, and uh, we should have, we should have standards that don't let any student get left behind. You know what I mean? And, and it's my fault because I, I should, I should also have more, pants with me at work just in case of of accidents typically i do but i should have more pants well uh, if virginia is expected to adapt to her environment i expect you to do the same <laughs> uh i i i i am i am uh ashamed to have brought something so unimportant to both of you uh a family who seems to really love their child and uh and I maybe need to think about the way I teach these these students. Um, but but I was okay. nerd. <laughs> Good and one, that's honey. the opening credits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the cold open of Scary with Children. I feel like we've we've met some regular characters. This poor teacher. <laughs> uh, we're gonna start with our actors. Uh, Jessica, um, is there anything before we do act one that you're thinking of for your character's backstory? Anything you'd like the writers to know? Any like uh, want or actor's secret that you'd like to share with us that we could like feed forward into the episode? Um, so I think I mentioned that I have ADHD. Yeah. ADHD. Um, I am really hot, um, really hot, <laughs> um, 
Um, <laughs> it's kind of like all of my career so with that. Um, I have, uh, uh, I guess I, I, I think I win a lot probably. Um, I was trapped in a well maybe at one point in time, trapped, <laughs> having fun, sort of, who knows. And you were uh, trapped in the well because, uh, because someone put, you just put yourself in the well to see if you could get out. Um, that's a great question. I, I like that. I, um, yeah, I like <laughs> that, that idea. People were threatening to throw me in the well. And so I just jumped down. I was like, I will just, <laughs> she just trapped herself in a well. I love it. Yeah. Um, Matt, same question. Um, any, any backstory that you'd like us to know either for, this character or if there's another character that you think we're going to see later who that might be um for for this particular character uh i don't yeah i don't know how much they're gonna keep appearing but i do think they have always been the unpopular kid in school and so became a teacher in order to claim some sort of power but uh realize that they're, they are less powerful than they ever expected because the kids are so <laughs> Um, and so it's just a constant cycle of uh, self-torment as a career for this particular educator. Yeah, um, and a rolling suitcase can hold so many spiders. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I had one that was like a carry-on when I was uh, a student in school. So that's a, it's a lot of bugs <laughs> to not, you know, call the FBI about, I think, if you were a teacher and instead to just be like, let's just talk about it. Yeah, I'm on his side. Uh, Jake, same question. Um, we, we met, we've met one of the parents, any, anything that you'd like us to know moving forward, any, any backstory for this character? Yeah, I think I was in, inspired by the idea of Marie, uh, and sort of that, like, very involved in their child's business, but also fiercely protective of them while also kind of like, uh both being in their corner and sort of scary in their own right and i sort of want that to be kind of like the driving dynamic between the the scary daughter i i think i named her virginia um uh virginia um virginia is the spooky child but maybe the the mother is the real scary one because of <laughs> how uh protective she is so like that kind of dynamic i love that uh, let's check in with our writers. Uh, Chris, we're getting ready to do Act One of this episode. Um, what's our first location? I think location is probably um, in front of the. I was gonna say play, the playground. I don't know how old these kids are. I yet. Um, so I was gonna say probably somewhere in the schoolyard. Okay. Awesome. Um, John, how much time passes between our cold open and our first act? Oh boy, I'm gonna guess that this is, this is the next day, I think. Um, <laughs> you have a meeting, you go home and no one wants, you gotta decompress. So no, that's, that's not good TV. So the next day, everyone's fresh. Love it. Um, and Richie, could we get a line of dialogue that you would like to hear in act one? Yeah. Uh, um... I'm allergic to them, but I just can't stop. Do you mind repeating that? <laughs> I'm allergic to them, but I just can't stop. Okay, actors, put that in your memory. I'm allergic to them, but I just can't stop. All right, so we have, it's the next day. We're at a playground. We have a line of dialogue that is pending at some point. Actors, you have a pretty big assignment. Are you ready for act one of Scary with Children? All right, writers, we know what we have to do. Val, are we ready in the booth? Yep, let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> what is going on? Why is there such a big crowd? <laughs> uh, I, I, think they're, I think they're looking at whatever's behind that dumpster over there. What's behind the dumpster? Oh my God, is, is she eating a crow? <laughs> oh, what? oh there's there's so many there's birds everywhere 
Oh my God. Oh, Virginia girl, she's eating a crow. Oh my God. She's really tearing through all the feathers and the bones. Oh. I can't chaperone this. You kids, stay away from the dumpster. Oh my God, they're uh, they're swarming. Oh, oh, uh, oh God, oh, they're carrying away Beth. <laughs> the oh, crows. Beth. <laughs> She's going to Beth, and they're carrying her away. Did you She's know gone. Her, right. by the way? Uh, I actually like this because I hate birds. <laughs> what a nasty thing to say. What? What a foul what a thing to believe. <laughs> I love watching them leave. And you know, I hate to see them go, but I love watching them leave. Are you attracted um, to the birds? <laughs> what? I'm not attracted to them, sexually speaking. Why, you, keep, you keep looking over at that one bird. No, I'm not. What's this dance you're doing? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Uh, it's hypnotic. We can't look away. Um. Well, it's not a show for you, okay? Sheesh. Okay. Aren't you supposed to be uh, chaperoning or something? I volunteer because I love children. Okay. I don't. I don't come here to be insulted by them. Little mean girl. Yeah, Miss Vilo. Well, I for one am glad that you're back from the hospital. Thank you. Yeah, that that neck brace looks really cushiony. <laughs> well, I I didn't think it would be so obvious, but uh, I'm I'm glad it's it's not terrifying you children. But thank you for for wanting the best of me. That fall was very bad. I fell many many flights of stairs. I almost died. Oh my God, wait, is that, is that, did you get that signed? Who is that signature by on your neck brace? Oh yeah, uh, so this one is from my friend, Aaron Sorkin. Uh, <laughs> I'm friends with Aaron Sorkin, actually. Uh, Whoa. Um, and this one just says fart uh, because my friend Beatrice thought it would be silly, <laughs> but uh but uh, but the it was so bad that the nurses actually got me a Make a Wish. So I, I, I met Aaron Sorkin's friend, uh, Martin Sheen. <laughs> Miss Violet, your Make a Wish was to meet a friend of one of your friends. <laughs> yes. I don't. I'm don't. I don't mean to criticize. It just seems like a waste of a of a wish. I don't think it's a wa waste of a wish. And and I'm more concerned around Virginia doing some sort of small curse gesture in her hands, some, some sort of spite. It's, it's called the Dougie, and it's not a curse, technically. Oh my god, Virginia, did you eat that bird too? Um, <clears throat> no. Have you ever been to a wedding reception? <laughs> yeah, sure, but I've that... I've never eaten a bird. I'm I'm allergic. Oh, I think have what's a chicken? Hmm? What is a chicken? Oh no. I've eaten chicken. <laughs> what is a chicken though? <laughs> Miss Violet, are you getting one of your ideas for a new screenplay? <laughs> Where am I? Who? Who am I? I know. She's gone crazy. <laughs> it, it's so Violet, hard to make Violet, you're having one of your spells. This is Violet. Wake up! Wake up! I need to see the. I need to see the nurse. I feel. I feel like the stairs again. Oh! Are, are her nurses nearby? Virginia. <laughs> Virginia, what did you do? Oh, it must have been the ducky. It it worked. <laughs> Violet, she just she just popped. Oh my gosh. I'm more powerful than I ever thought. 
I think she's in H-E double hockey sticks. Virginia, you sent our chaperone to hell? Well, she was a volunteer. <laughs> Could you send anyone to hell, do you think? I don't know. I've never tried. Well, uh, what work. were you thinking of? <laughs> oh, so no then? Well, Darren? <laughs> <laughs> Darren, you know you. Did I hear some sort of devil talk happening over here? <laughs> oh. Who's uh, talking about the devil in hell? Oh, it's you. The little mean goth girl in the neighborhood. <laughs> I have blood there. Gots can have blonde hair. <laughs> Mr. O'Brien, we told you we don't need you checking up on us at school. That's right. Yeah. Well, I don't much care what you kids have to say. I'm bored, and I've got nothing else going on in my life. So I'm going to show up here, and I'm going to tell you. Don't you have a job? Yeah. Uh. No, not since the train factory made me quit voluntarily. They made you quit voluntarily? Yeah, they didn't want to give me severance, so they made me quit. I said It said on the news you embezzled like 40 grand from... It was 38. <laughs> the media 38 and their grand. lives. That's so little. You could have embezzled so much more. Yeah, I'm aware, but I'm bad at it. <laughs> Listen, your little shirt, little mean mm -hmm. Veronique or uh, uh, Veronica or uh, uh, Virginia. Yeah, that's it. Your your shirt says "Today Satan." Mm -hmm. What kind of shirt is that for a little girl to say "Today Satan"? You can read. I found it on shirts that go hard on Elon Musk's Elon Musk, as you all know. <laughs> yeah, Mr. O'Brien, it's important to live in the moment. Maybe if you tried it, you wouldn't be so alone. That was very that that was unnecessarily personal. Mm. Well, maybe I will live in the moment. Maybe, maybe I'll. I'll think about my life. In this moment. <laughs> Still no. <laughs> <laughs> and now a word from our sponsors. <laughs> I'll say it. I want one of those shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I love a, a satanic panic neighbor, which, by the way, that's back. That is fully... Yeah. Fully back. Satanic Panic is is rocking the suburbs right now. Um, so we have Act One of Scary with Children. Um, let's check in with our with our actors. Let's talk about um, any motivation that you're feeling for your character, or something that might happen in Act Two. Any new discoveries you've made about your characters? Any expansion of those backstories we talked about? Um, we'll start with Matt, because you've played a, a few different characters for us so far. And they're all, like, really sad adults uh, <laughs> who are really going through it. Uh, so the discovery I've made is that, like, that is the the buffer against somebody who's a confident goth child would be a uh, sad adult uh, with no purpose. Uh, so we may see more of those pop up or I may try to spread my horizons a bit. Well, I love the idea too that our, that Virginia is this terrifying goth who could place a curse on the town and, and draws all the crows, but is also scaring adults because she's doing everything with joy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's yeah. positive. She loves uh, it. Yeah, uh, Jake. Same same question. Any anything with your character so far that you feel motivated to build on in Act Two? Anything with the backstory we talked about that you'd like to expand on, or or even like contradict? Uh, yeah. I I feel like my character in that scene was uh sort of the 
definitely a, a clinger, someone who's just kind of looking for uh, whoever feels like they're getting the most attention in the moment, uh, which in this moment happened to be Virginia. Um, so I was sort of that like ancillary person in the school who's like always just sort of around the action, but never directly uh, in the spotlight herself, despite her best intentions, perhaps. That's that's great uh, Disney Channel original characterization. <laughs> yeah, I'm drawing from what I know. We need to populate with like, you know, passerby children and innocent bystander children and people to point at things and <laughs> take sides. Uh -huh. I'm sort uh, of the beans of this uh, Steven Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jake, did you say that your character's last pronouns were she, her? I did, or, correct. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, Jessica, same question. Um, anything that, that you're learning about Virginia that you'd like to share with us or any other characters that you're inspired to, you know, to create that we might see in act two? Um, well, I am curious about, like, Beth and, like, where the birds took her and, like, what um, that <laughs> is going on, like, what that means for the world. Um, I am also curious, like, it seems like these, like, adults um, are potentially, like, villains, but I think in Wednesday, like, it the villains kind of surprise you. They're not who you think they are. So I don't know. I think that could be fun to play with. Um, and as far as other characters, um, yeah, I don't know. It's fun to have uh, someone fall in love with Virginia and see what happens there. I love that. Um, Let's turn to our writers. John, we'll start with you. Um, any situations or plot lines that you'd like to see in Act Two, or even a new location? I mean, I think we have to deal with the fact that the teacher just went to hell a little bit. <laughs> and I, I think it was funny because her light, she was like, name dropping a bunch of people and also had suffered a terrible accident which felt like a version of hell already so I'm a little bit I, I i am a little bit curious what hell would would be for um this teacher um so i would say uh at least at least some kind of explanation of how if we don't see it directly yeah for sure um Chris, same question. Any any situations or plot lines you'd like to see in Act Two, um, even if it's a continuation of Act One? I kind of love the idea of uh, yeah, like the teacher got sent to their own personal hell, maybe. Um, like that uh, Thursday or Virginia can't um, can't seem to get the spells quite right, and people end up at like maybe the third or maybe fourth option instead of hell. You know, like. <laughs> We're going like somewhere else, like maybe the DMV or like, um, or like maybe it's somewhere where Beth ends up as well uh, with the birds. Uh, that nothing ever seems to come quite the the right way. You know, we're in episode one. We got we got character growth and powers growth to, to think about here. So, <laughs> exactly. I I love the idea of you know hell just being right outside your front door. That was that yeah. was beautiful, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Richie, same question. Any any situations that you'd like to plant the seeds for now in Act Two? Yeah, I'm I'm curious. Uh, one, Jake, did your character have a name? I I don't think we explicitly named her in that scene. No. Okay, cool. I'm I'm, I'm curious now. why why she wouldn't go to hell. Uh, what's up with her? Uh, why is the teacher going to hell, but the the student when uh, Jess was not doing I Dream of Genie? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um and richie did you hear your line of dialogue in act one i heard the oh. beginning of it okay cool um john uh can we get a line of dialogue from you that we would like to hear in act two? Oh, that belongs to uh clint eastwood <laughs> oh that belongs to Clint Eastwood. Actors. 
put it put it right up here where you can find it. All right, we have a tall order ahead of us. It's Act Two of Scary with Children. I think we know what needs to be done. Val, are you ready in the booth? Let's do it. Let's go. Wakey, wakey. Oh. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Where am I? You're in <laughs> uh, a dream world. <laughs> I, I, I'm where? Looks, a dream wonderland. A dream, a dream wonderland. Oh. Uh, I, I don't remember anything. I was just on the on the bus and we were you we were throwing stuff around and now <laughs> oh it, it's so dark in here. Oh <laughs> is it dark? Wow, that's so wonderful. Did you want some bacon? It's fresh. Sure. Yeah, I'll I'll have some. Here you go. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, it's not that crispy. I thought it'd be crispier. <laughs> I like my bacon sloppy wet. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that a was that a cackle? Are you cackling at me? Are you are you trying to say that my laugh sounds like a cackle? It just sounded like there was intent behind it. What what is this? What did you give me? I have a bunch of cackle. Oh, are you feeling sleepy? Hmm. Maybe a little too honest. Yeah. I, oh, everything's going dark again. Hey, Beth. Hey, Beth. Huh? Beth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, look, I'm gonna give it to you straight. You're in a version of hell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not the hell that you normally think of. I'm your grandma, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, yeah, what What are you doing? Are you in hell too, grandma? Yeah, I died yesterday. Actually. You died yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> Mom didn't <laughs> tell me? I fell down. Get, get this. I fell down a flight of... Stairs? Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Some people never recover from that. So this so this isn't like a brunch place? Like I guess oh, like no, it gotten... is. Uh, um sorry, I didn't see you there. Um can I get you something to drink? <laughs> I mean I I got map quest directions, but I think they might be wrong. Uh but I don't I guess if you got mimosas, I'll I'll take a mimosa. Grandma? Are you my grandma too? I think you're just Beth's grandma, but I don't even know Beth. How did I end up here? Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sorry? Bruce Springsteen, is that you? Yeah, baby. Oh, no. I'm wearing... <laughs> Am I in oh. hell too? Did I There's die? No way Bruce Springsteen went to hell. Surprise, those hips don't lie. Uh, uh, I'll go grab a mimosa for you. And Beth, did you want one too, honey? Uh, sure, sure, Grandma. I guess I'm in hell. <laughs> I might as well, right? <laughs> Drink up, absolutely. Hey, little girl, uh, you got a bunch of crow bite marks all over you. You okay? Uh, I, 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 Bruce, I don't know. I just I just woke up in here. I, I think we got to get out of here. I don't feel good about this. Yeah, I don't feel good either. It's hot as hell in here. I guess that makes sense. I'm sweating like a pig. What's, what's the last thing you remember before you woke up here? Well, I was in the middle of writing a song uh but i don't know the title but i remember having a eureka moment uh and i guess i out of excitement jumped out of the window but 
you know, that's the last thing I remember. So I was figuring uh, that I live, but I guess I'm dead. But, uh, you know, just call me the boss and maybe I'll remember uh, what all happened. Okay, boss. Wait, 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 no, call me Bruce. Hey, Bruce, sorry, jeez. <laughs> Thank you. Bruce, look, I think we got to make for a break for it when she comes back. I'll I'll push her down that flight of stairs over there, and then we're going to run uh, behind us as fast as we can, okay? Maybe we can break out of hell. I, baby, I was born to run. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay, shh. Here she comes. Call, here she comes. call me boss. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Hi, honey. Um, hey. Oh, no, this belongs to Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Here you go, Beth. Well, I knew he'd be in. <laughs> um, um, Grandma, um, I, it's so it's so hard to see you and how dark it is here. But I think the light's better by those stairs over there. I just I just want to get one last look at my grandma. Did you want to take a selfie? Yeah, could we could we go take a selfie by the landing over there? <laughs> Let's take a selfie. Okay, ready? Ready. Get in it. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm shift right here. I think the lady's better right behind you. <laughs> Bruce, <laughs> go run. You gotta book it. <laughs> oh my legs! Ow, oh, I can't oh, run. No, Bruce. Oh God, go without me. You better run. Now. Bruce, I gotta leave you behind. It's okay. You'll be the new Bruce Springsteen, Beth. You'll take over for me, won't you? Yeah. I'm here. I'm at the exit. I'm leaving. Oh. Goodbye, oh. hell. Wait. <laughs> you got that mimosa for me? Uh, uh... Yeah. Just uh, give me a minute, will you? Gonna, okay, parents. I'm just gonna ice this ankle. <laughs> uh, parents, one of the children has been uh, terrorizing this school recently. I think we all know who I'm talking about. Um, of course. A bad influence on my kids. On Was your it family. Beth? It's Beth, yeah. <laughs> Beth. He's shit. That girl has been a nightmare, you know? I think she ate a piece of shit one time. Yes. <laughs> I've been training birds in my backyard for the last month. And I think I have oh. a solution to our problem. I propose uh, tomorrow during lunch, I have my birds crowd around the dumpster. We lure Beth back there and then we carry her away once and for all. Oh. Kind of birds? Ka! Ka! They're, they're crows. They're here now. You can hear them. They sound, they sound angry. Are they? Are they trained Ka! to be? Angry now? They're pissed all the time. Every... All, all, all hopped up on on uh, mushrooms and peanuts. Ka! 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 Better diet than most crows get. Uh, is there somewhere nicer that we can send them than a dumpster? I don't know. They're birds. They deserve better. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions? I don't know. Birds like dumpsters. They they actually love dumpsters in my experience. So That's yeah. so gooch. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's pretty gooch. That's so good. You're, you're being pretty good, bruh. <laughs> you know, speaking of terrorizing kids, has anyone else been uh, terrorized by that little uh, Virginia girl? I feel like every time I want to do something about it, my opinion changes, and then I hate Beth a little more. But, like, I don't know why yeah. that is. Yeah, now that you mention it, every time I think about her, suddenly I'm thinking about Beth instead. Yeah. No, she's charming, Virginia. 
<laughs> oh, you said that. Okay, never it's mind. Charm. <laughs> I, I, no, I do <laughs> like. <laughs> um, look, parents. Um, I just, I just, a lot of, a lot of our parents have been dying. I think there's a real stairs problem in this town. Okay, I just want to talk about the giant elephant in the room. <laughs> Grandmas are dropping like flies, okay? That is a fact. That is that a fact. is true. <laughs> I I do wonder why our stairs are always at this angle. Every every staircase I've been on, every step every step is at about a 45 degree angle. 45 angle. degree incline, yeah. Why do we do it this way? Grandmas are like, oh, they're like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a pretty good impression whoa. of how they sound. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now you're being pretty gooch right now. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. You're being gooch. <laughs> you're gooch. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if we like put in some railings on these stairs, it would help the situation. Yeah, like maybe we put some uh, railings on the stairs. <laughs> Jerry, that's a great idea. That's uh that's a that's a really solid idea. Uh, do you guys want me to get on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, you're the you're the contractor, so yeah. Yeah, if you want to just go around and do yeah. a run. Yeah, I've got nothing better to do. Jerry's my coffee shop. On Town Square, you know, um, it's uh, closed for maintenance at the moment, so I've kind of gotten nothing better to do. That works out. That that does work out well for <laughs> us. Uh, That's so nice. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, are you going to skate on the rails? <laughs> uh, me skate? Nah, I'm too old for that. You know, one time I tried to go down these stairs and I almost died. So no more skating. Why do you say it like that? You're wearing a t-shirt that says today skating on it. <laughs> <laughs> really skate. Look, look, I don't want to really talk about it. I'm not going to be skating anymore. I almost broke both of my legs and died. So, um, well, where did you come from? I, I heard I heard about people falling downstairs and dying, and I also had that experience once uh, and almost died. And then I went to hell, but I I found my way back by leaving a trail of my neck brace leading back to. The <laughs> wow! I've seen such Whoa. things, such dark dark things. Tell us more. Tell us more. Well, hey, uh, Mr. G, is that is it, that signature on your neck brace say Ang Lee? It does. <laughs> that, that is Ang Lee. I met him in hell, uh, but he was just visiting. He he was on vacation and he left. Yeah, did you did you know anyone else? Is there anyone else that's famous in hell? Um Let's see who I knew. Uh, so many people. I actually know everyone, uh, particularly the people in hell. <laughs> um, well, it was mostly grandmas uh, and an, an, kind of a disturbing number of grandmas for hell. Um, and a lot of people who <laughs> were afraid of, uh, of Virginia, actually, which was funny. Um, but, uh, but none of them could remember why. Wait a minute. You guys don't think No, it couldn't be. What? Tell us. You don't think Beth has been going around killing the people in this town, do you? And now I... a word from our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> for Beth, first of all, just this is for Beth. All all Beth did was be light enough to be carried away by birds. <laughs> if, if, if Beth is guilty of one thing um, so we're heading into act three of Scary with Children 
we've met, we've really expanded. We talked about like, do we want any new locations? And we went into into hell. We went down into down into the bowels with some new characters, a celebrity cameo that we get Bruce Springsteen for the pilot <laughs> of this show. I really like the budget that, that speaks to. First of all, we've <laughs> name dropping. We're really like bringing in the big names. Um, I do think maybe as like we could agree, Act Three, no new characters. Huh. Yeah. We're wrapping up today's episode, we want to like resolve the threads that we have uh, with the characters that we have so far. Um, let's check in with our actors though. I want to know like what you feel like is unresolved for your characters. Something that you would like to really like get done before the end of Act Three. Uh, this time we'll start with Jake. Yeah, I mean, it's it's clear at this point that Virginia is sort of pulling the strings of the whole town, whether they know it or not. So I think we need to get to the, the extent of her powers over this town and perhaps her motives as well. Why is she so intent on framing Beth for everything? Why, uh, why is she killing all the grandmas? Uh, yeah, what, what, what is this all part of a plan of, right? Yeah, what do the grandmas know? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. um, Jessica, same question. Um, anything that you feel unresolved for uh, Virginia or any of the other characters that you've played that you'd like to really like land in, in Act 3? Um, I really love Jerry. I know that's kind of everyone's favorite character that I've played. Jerry, everyone remembers him. <laughs> as the lovable skater who owns a cafe. And I really need to see him be in love with me. So that's probably going to happen. Um, and, and then I just have to figure out what's going on with Virginia. Yeah, I'm, I kind of have no idea, but I'm really excited to... So, absolutely yeah. yeah um matt same question any anything that you'd like to really like drive home in this last act um i think virginia is gonna need uh more support in her efforts and i think that'll come likely in the way of her teacher who is willing to uh do whatever kids tell him to do so that he's liked by them and so i think uh, you know, a hesitant alliance between the teacher who just wants to support this little girl. Uh, but yeah, seeing seeing where he goes uh, and how he might help in this mission is interesting to me. Yeah. Also, is Bruce Springsteen still dead? I think that's a question we're all asking. What is uh, Buffy's advisor's name? Her her teacher friend, Giles. 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 Yeah, so that's that's how you could be, um, yeah. only with a, a backup pair of pants, just in case. <laughs> um, Matt is Violet, Mrs. Violet. Is she the one with the uh, brace around her neck? Yes. Okay. Yeah. She she's fallen downstairs and yeah, and is okay. dropping. Correct. Okay. Everybody in this town needs to get garden apartments. Everybody needs to stay. <laughs> uh, let's that's check in with our writers. Good. Uh, Richie, are there any loose threads that you would like to see closed before this episode ends? I can't really think of any loose threads. It's all been pretty, pretty tight. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I guess um, I I do like that it is. Um, we we said it's two thousand one, and Bruce Springsteen is in hell. Um, <laughs> So I'm, I'm kind of uh, interested in that thread. Uh, what what exactly? Uh, how what's the difference between hell world and real world as far as time goes? Uh, and it does might be the town know that Bruce is talking. dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, John, same question. Any. Any loose threads that you'd like to wrap up? Any plot lines that you have questions about before our episode ends? I mean, I want to see Virginia and Beth and what what's fundamentally going on there at the heart of that. Because that feels like that's sort of being set up 
as they wander through everyone's version of how they sort of feel like the the maybe the main two characters, the teacher has become a, a much bigger character than I would have thought, perhaps. But yeah, it's he will do whatever the two of them probably say. So the two of them, it feels like the and it it feels like a mystery about what what is going on with sending grandmas to hell and why and why the why the frame. Yeah. That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> why are those grandmas in hell? Um and Chris, uh before we go into Act three of Scary with Children. Can we get a line of dialogue that you'd like to hear before the show ends? Um, I think that we need to hear someone give out a little Bruce Springsteen line at some point. I mean, we're talking about Dancing in the Dark. We're talking about Born in the USA. We're talking about all the other hits. Any I, any favorite that you have specifically that you want to that you want to plant? I like I like uh, dancing in the dark, and there's been a lot of dark rooms in this so far. So, all right, let's let's try to do all of that. I like <laughs> dancing in the dark, but there's not a lot of dark rooms in this so far. All right, <laughs> we're we're heading into Act Three of Scary with Children. It's going to be the end of our first episode. Val, are you ready? Yep, let's do it. Go. Now, uh, oh, you two have been having some problems lately. So, yeah, Virginia, Beth, Beth, Virginia, we get yeah. it. Well, what? I don't have anything to say to her. And I don't have anything to say to her. Nothing. Well, yeah, nothing, Virginia. Really, nothing at all. <laughs> don't make me say it. I've been up in tree for a week. <laughs> and I know Riding. what you're meaning up there. I saw your little guy. You I'm gonna build a house. Good luck. Only Jerry could build a house. <laughs> Jerry's. A very beloved contractor among this school and yes he could build a very nice house but that is a little sarcastic and is not pushing this conversation forward why are you two fighting she's not just building a house she's been up there with the birds and they're planning something i know it virginia <laughs> we talked about these birds before she's cackling do you hear her cackle <laughs> i'm not cackling it's just a laugh. It is just my laugh. If that is her laugh, it's a little rude to call it a cackle that's insinuating, you know. Thank you. Qualities. Thank you, Mr. Born in the USA. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long last name, but I, I appreciate you pronouncing it. <laughs> well, Mr. Born in the USA, who is right? <laughs> You have to pick which one of us gets detention. You sound like all of the town's grandmas, Beth. Hey. What? Now, <laughs> with all the recent deaths of these grandmas, is that a nice thing to say to Beth? <laughs> yeah, Virginia, is that a threat? Did I stutter? I don't think you did. Uh, <laughs> you, I didn't. It was hey. a question. Mr. Born in the USA, there is a clear side of good and a side of evil in this dynamic. Yes, I think it's right very clear. Well, I don't like to take sides in anything in my life. Uh, and I don't believe in good or evil. I believe in a spectrum of emotional responses informed by... But Virginia, you've been very mean, and I think He's you might evil. be right evil's a strong word one. we moved my grandma into a storm cellar to protect her from virginia <laughs> things That's haven't scary. been this chaotic since the power went out at the homecoming dance and who did that 
I did, but I vomited on the <laughs> power breaker and that wasn't my fault. I thought I saw two dogs outside that were chasing each other and that nauseates me. I'm not going to get into it. I don't have to defend my my body to you Wait, children. Mr. Born in the USA, you're the reason that we were dancing in the dark? <laughs> Yes, but we didn't. It was only covered by the local news. It it wasn't. It, nobody knew it besides a few people. Beth, if you call that dancing, we've got another thing to talk about. <laughs> you making fun of Beth's dancing now, Virginia? I'm sorry. I have a sense of humor. Is that illegal? <laughs> At least my dancing Why? attract all the crows in the town. <laughs> okay, enough about the crows, aka my best friend's Beth. Where's your grandma? Tell me. <laughs> which cellar? I'm not going to tell you which cellar. I know you're the one that's been causing all the grandmas to fall down the stairs in town. That's been her, Mr. Alleged. Alleged. I didn't build the stairs. You all forget that I'm not the carpenter of this town. I am just a young, hot girl <laughs> yeah but you guys are always hanging out together who you and the carpenter you hang out you hang out with jerry i've asked him to hang out and he never wants to hang out with me but i'm but i i've i've been nice to him that's not fair oh we love jerry the skater i hope he's recurring <laughs> listen <laughs> One thing is for sure, Virginia, is that what? killing grandmas is gooch, okay? It's not okay. So. Gooch, gooch, gooch. Sorry, I'm just. Gooch, gooch, gooch. It's French. <laughs> and it means. <laughs> it means. Uh, of, of bad quality, Virginia. <laughs> The only thing of bad quality right now, Mr. Born in the USA, is your attitude. I go to therapy <laughs> every week to check my attitude. So if I am acting brash- out at the library? I'm so sorry. Look, I feel like I need my medication. Does anyone have any Adderall? <laughs> uh i actually i actually have some in my bag <gasps> a portal to hell what? opens oh <laughs> oh god don't go what? down there what have you oh. done virginia what is this <laughs> virginia where are we <laughs> you said you wanted to see your grandmas didn't you I oh my God, there's so many grandmas. There's too many grandmas. There's <laughs> I, I, I don't know which are which. <laughs> they all blend together, don't they? Now that's not very, that's, you know, all grandmas are individuals. Uh... <laughs> what are they all doing? They're all crowding behind that dumpster with that man. Yeah, what is, what's going that's on? That's not a that man. Thing? Yeah, what's going on over there? What's going on? I can barely make it out. Don't crowd. There's enough time for... That's big, not a man, that? <laughs> Who's over there? <laughs> New fans? <laughs> hey, want your picture taken? Uh, no, it's old fans. So many of them. You got that right. The name's Bruce. You oh kids know gosh. me. Are you are you aware? Yeah, I th I think my my dad liked you, but you died back in two thousand one. <laughs> it yeah, is right. two thousand one, dummy. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, never forget it's two thousand one. <laughs> hey, anybody here uh, starting a car? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get your engine running. Is that one of my lyrics? 
and, and that's the end of the show. <laughs> I I really feel like I know I said this was a guest star. I feel like Bruce Springsteen is a regular on this show. Oh yeah, he signed on. Yeah. yeah. Once in a while there's like a, a TV show that has like a, a famous person as themselves. And I think that's just uh this is what was the show that had uh James Vanderbeek as himself? He was like a oh, neighbor. Don't trust the bee. Don't in, trust the bee. Yeah. In apartment yeah. 23. Yeah. So no one has ever said this about Bruce Springsteen before, but he's the James Vanderbeek of this show. <laughs> to make up for him not being in Who's the Boss. <laughs> well, if he was in Who's the Boss, yeah. no one would have to ask. That's actually yeah. that's it it would be called. Yeah, that'd be a show called We Know Who the Boss Is. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would love it if Tony Danza just played Bruce Springsteen in that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Great. I would have to call him Tony Springsteen, though. <laughs> because he only plays Tony. Yeah, he can. Yeah, apparently, that's why. Yeah, Yeah, they they say a different name and he forgets to look up. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like a crow. So let's, uh, we're going to start with our actors. Just to recap a little bit, um, I know this show is created by the elements of two other shows, but does this remind us of anything else? Any existing shows? Or if you were scheduling like a block of sitcoms, what other shows might you pair this with? Um, we'll start with Matt. Um, so I just remember that this is on WB, not the CW, the WB, <laughs> um, which I think Reaper uh, was a very short-lived show on the WB that was about a demon killer. It was like a, a, a comedy uh, and he had to like send demons back to hell. Uh, so this feels like it could have existed in that block of like Tuesday night demon WB shows, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, I love the idea of this show being part of those like uh, promo packages for fall TV that WB used to do. They would also do magazine layouts in like Rolling Stone and stuff that would unfold 10 times with all the casts. If you looked at one of those now, you would see so many strangers, just <laughs> people that were just never heard from again. Um, Jessica, same question. Did this remind you of any other show that you've seen? Or if you could pair it with an existing show, which one would you be like at 8 and 8.30? Um, uh, I do think like kind of like supernatural vibes or... Um... Sabrina the Teenage Witch, like the reboot. Um, and um, I was trying to put Gilmore Girls vibes in as well. Yeah, it had a nice, like, folksy, small town vibe with the backwards cap. Definitely, I was getting some Luke for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jake, same question. Any, any shows that you would pair this with or anything it reminds you of? I've never seen a single episode of this show, so I may be wildly mischaracterizing it. But do you re I remember seeing ads for a show, I think it was on ABC Family, called Three Moons Over Milford. And my understanding of it was that it was a small town where, like, the moon was hit by an asteroid and broke into three pieces above them. And they sort of, like, were dealing with the ramifications of, like, the world potentially ending at any moment as these, like, pieces of the moon were, like, drifting off in space. Um... It feels like that. There's it's sort of like kind of small town community, but like also there's a real ominous air over everything that happens. So okay. First yeah. of all, I'm gonna say it sounds like you have seen it. <laughs> no, let me know if I'm I'm wildly off Milford heads out there. I like the idea of three moons and maybe like one moon is a werewolf moon and one moon is just the moon, and then one moon is for like uh oh, that's great. That's the season finale. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Um, let's check in with our writers. Uh, John, we'll start with you. Assuming this, this show gets picked up, why wouldn't it? Uh, what happens in episode two of Scary with Children? Okay, well, it sort of ended with them um, taking their ADD medicine and going to hell. I think <laughs> what happened. That was like the resolution, which felt like 
we got the ADD thing at the very beginning and then it came back at the end. So I feel like that's the episode. So it's like, what happens? So, you know, you almost wonder if there, if it's, if it's like some kind of uh, thematic drug every episode, or um, maybe since it's like a teenage thing, like some kind of like spell or different, different force that gets explored. Like this was very hell based, but like, what if Bruce Springsteen was in purgatory next time or, or some other place or they all, it felt very much like a CW, like a teenage show that got picked up by like Adult Swim. Like, because oh with the Springsteen element, like it, it feels like animated. So it really feels like it, it could go almost anywhere given where we went in the pilot. Um, <laughs> I'd like to see kind of maybe not like a hell ADD medicine thing, but maybe like a potion. And then this one felt I, I, maybe like a grounded one, maybe more of like a, all within the same realm sort of change the pace up a little bit something like a small world yeah um and i do just want to say real quick i just i just got word if bruce springsteen turns us down uh john mellencamp is tech avail okay <laughs> um chris we're we're picked up we have right. episode one episode two what happens in our season finale of this say we do 22 episodes how does this season end Oh man, I guess I love the the PTA. Um, I think in the finale we find out that Bruce Springsteen not only is the head of the PTA, <laughs> but he's actually like I don't know if you ever watched the Venture Brothers where they had David Bowie was the leader of the uh, the Guild of Calamitous Intents, but later turned out that he was a shapeshifter that no one really knew who he really was. So I think that opens up. Maybe we get John Mellencamp for season two when he shifts into John Mellencamp at the end of the season that he's always moving and shaking and whispering. This this show would work really well animated, I I think, honestly. <laughs> I, I Nick Davis probably could help us with that, I think. So yeah. Um and Richie, uh finally this show gets picked up. It runs five seasons. Where where are we in season five with this show? Um, season five, I feel like, um, well, one, that's two seasons too many. Um, <laughs> uh, I feel like we're, uh, you know, I, I think that the, the sort of, uh, I'm really kind of obsessed with the hell being so easily accessible, uh, thing. I think that there's kind of a a nice relationship between hell and the and the town um and you know maybe uh maybe jump the shark but virginia uh is running for mayor uh <laughs> and uh doing well mm -hmm. i love that well i think we really did something tonight we created a a beautiful pilot episode of a sitcom that for, for my money is getting picked up. I can't wait to watch what happens on this show. Thank you to everybody for joining us. We do have one more piece of business though. I believe a good sitcom has a theme song. Um, so while we're saying goodbye tonight, um, our actors and our writers will improvise a song for us to, <laughs> to send us off into the night. Everybody in your Zoom boxes and everybody watching at home, feel free to do your best opening credit poses during this. Uh, Val, thank you so much. Thank you to the Trident Network. Everybody follow the Trident Network on every social media platform. Subscribe on Twitch. You can do that with your Amazon Prime subscription for free. Get on it. Uh, support striking writers and actors. Everybody have a great night. And here's the theme to Scary with Children. You know, scare with children. This is around. You're hoping a gate of hell push your grandma down. <laughs> the... Born in the USA's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> And all the crows can talk, but you can't hear what they say. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you. Bye.